What's going on guys, welcome to my Nought to 10K Beginner Strategy. This video is for the person, the beginner who wants to start a dropshipping business. They understand how the business model works, they know the kind of components that are involved in starting a dropshipping business, but they're feeling a bit overwhelmed, a bit of analysis paralysis, they've watched countless YouTube videos and they're not quite sure how to put all of the different pieces together. So today I'm going to take you through the different actions you should take um, in order, step by step. Before we get into the different components then, um, it's worth noting what those components are. So there's four components that go into any successful dropshipping business and then within each of these components, of course, there's a lot more components which we'll be covering in the video. So the main four components you can see on the screen here is your product. Every business, of course, needs a product to sell. Every business needs a store to sell that product on some kind of platform, whether it's a landing page on ClickFunnels or whether it's an e-commerce website on Shopify. They of course need a supplier for that product, whether it's a Chinese supplier, it's a local supplier in the country you're currently sat in, or whether you're making the product yourself, you need a means to source it or making the product. And then of course marketing, you need a way to put your product in front of your target audience. Without these four components, your business will fail. And all four of these components are key as well. You can't have one without the other. So for example, if you have a brilliant product, a brilliant store and a brilliant supplier, but then you have no means to marketing the product and getting it in front of people, the business is ultimately going to fail. You could pay 10 grand for a website, you could have a supplier that can deliver same day, and you could have an unlimited marketing budget. But if you have a crap product that nobody is interested in and nobody wants to buy, the business is going to fail. So basically, either way you do it, you need all four of these components and you need to do them really, really well. So let's jump into arguably the most important component to any business. Well, I think it is because it's where every business starts. Without a product, you have nothing to sell and you have no way of making money. So this strategy has been built to get you results as quickly as possible. As a beginner, getting into something new, especially something like a business which has time and financial commitments and risks, um, especially the dropshipping business too, where there's a lot of conflicting information on YouTube, it can be difficult to know whether this is all just kind of smoke and mirrors or whether it actually works or not. So in the beginning, at least from what I found with the people that I work with, it's super, super important to get them that win and get them that results and get them that first few sales as quickly as possible because then they become more motivated. Any kind of hesitations they had about the business model instantly diminish and they become a lot more invested or willing to invest into their business. So of course, I'll take you through the kind of key things, the most important things of each of these components you need to consider. Perhaps I could do a more detailed video on each of these components and kind of like a mini course or mini series. Um, but ultimately, I do this YouTube channel for you guys. So make sure you let me know what it is you wanna see and um, I can produce some content on the idea. So when it comes to products then, go for a trending product to see results fast. Don't try and find a product that nobody else has sold. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. Don't try and design a product from scratch. It's gonna cost a lot of money. Go for something that you know for a fact is already selling and make sure it's a drop shipping product too. Make sure it's a product that you can source from AliExpress or is available on AliExpress because a drop shipping product that works versus just a typical e-commerce product that works, two completely different things. So for example, to illustrate that is that when a lot of people will beginners especially, the mistake they'll make is they'll go onto AliExpress and they'll see a product that has 10,000 orders and they think, oh, that's a winning product. That's not the case. AliExpress is not a dropshipping supplier. Yes, they supply products and they can supply it directly to your customer so you can use them as a dropshipping supplier, but the main bulk of their revenue and sales and those order numbers you see do not come from dropshippers. They are end users, they are consumers. So just because somebody is willing to buy it directly from AliExpress, does not mean that they're willing to pay an extra 10, 15, 20 pounds on top of the AliExpress price to buy it from you. And that kind of skips us or jumps ahead to point number three, make sure there's a minimum of $20 margin. So whatever you buy your products for, including everything, including shipping costs, including any customs fees, import fees, whatever the cost is of that product delivered to your customer's doorstep, you need to be able to sell that product for a minimum of $20 more. If you can do that and find a product that does that for you, then you have the potential to run a business that makes you a profit pretty much from day one. Obviously there's loads and loads and other things to consider, but $20 room, if not more, 
is a good benchmark to be looking for. So go for a trending product to see results fast. That way you know the product is in demand. That way you know the product is already working. And once you've found a product using platforms like Exploding Topics, Strapper Spy, Tor, um, Store Hunter, um, Miner or Minia, then you can find everything else behind that business too. So when you see somebody advertising a dropshipping product and it's working, you can see the ad creative they're using. You can see the landing page that they're using. You can't always see what supplier they're using, but out of the four components, the supplier is probably the easiest one to be fair, and we'll cover more of that in a second. So using these tools, you'll be able to find those posts on TikTok, those posts on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on all of these different social media platforms, and you can vet them, you can see the engagements behind them, you can see the comments, you can see the order history, you can see all that good stuff, so you know that you have a winning product on your hand, and then you see what that business is currently doing to make it winning products that you can then use as inspiration. The only, in full transparency of course, the only downside to using this as your strategy when it comes to finding a product is number one is competition. When something appears on one of these platforms, there's gonna be a lot of other people trying to sell it. So just make sure that you do things better than the person that you can currently see is selling it. It's, I can't think of an industry in this world that isn't very competitive. And people don't just not come into competitive markets because it's impossible to win, that's not the case. You just have to do things better, have a better store, have a better creative, that sort of thing. So just make sure that you take care of the rest of these three other components and you'll be good to go. The second disadvantage that you do need to be aware of, because I made this mistake when I first started, is that trending products are trending products because they go through a cycle of being out of trend, they go up in trend and up in popularity, they hit a peak, and then they come back down and out of. You want to find a product that is at the very beginning, or if not, slowly starting to go up, so you can kind of ride the roller coaster up. When you get kind of halfway down, that is when you need to then be looking for the next product to replace the current income and a product that currently has demand for the, for the season or time of year that you're coming into. So for example, if we take, I always use the pet niche because it's my favorite niche of all. The two kind of polar opposite seasons, I suppose, in the UK here, even though summer is, can be like winter sometimes. Obviously you have winter, it's dry. Obviously you have summer, sorry, it's dry and it's warm. So you have products like paddling pools for dogs or cool mats for dogs or walking bottles that allow you to keep your dog cool during the summer or you have like water games in the garden that sort of thing so as you're coming into summer in the UK you would start selling those you would ride the wave ride the wave and then when the clocks go back and the weather starts to change sort of like September-ish time you would then turn your attention to winter type products like reflective rain jackets or gilets to keep dogs warm or protectors for the car or protectors for the sofa to keep mud off it. So that's the only thing you need to be aware of is just make sure that when you do pick one of these trending products that you start selling it at the right time and just make sure that you're always looking kind of two or three months ahead for when that product comes out of season um, so you have something else to replace it with. So that's your starting point. That is the first step is you need to find yourself a product that you're gonna be selling. Um, this is purely just to like I mentioned earlier in the video, to boost your motivation, verify in your own mind that the business model does work and develop your skills. We're not really interested in having a long-term business or brand at this point. You just need to get familiar with everything and the pitfalls and the hurdles and the stresses and the difficult things that you'll have to overcome and skills you have to develop if you are planning on doing this for the long run. And by having products that come in and out of trend, you'll learn pretty much everything you need to do, learn when it comes to product selection, when it comes to designing stores, um, and when it comes to marketing as well. So once you've kind of been through a couple of cycles, it will put you in a nice position where you have the skills and confidence to build something in the long run. And if you've done things well up to this point as well, you should have some cash in the bank, which then allows you to invest in that long-term brand um, and do things to a high level right from the very beginning, from the get-go. Let's move on to component number two then, so store. There's, store is like, it's so underestimated from a lot of the people so 90% of the people that I work with on a one-to-one -one basis, they already have a store, they've already tried drop shipping, and more often than not, the store is just not up to scratch and it needs significant amounts of work to get it up to scratch. And it's usually the simple things where I see them falling down. So number one, try and stay away from general stores. General stores for a fact do not convert as well as a branded niche store. And when I say branded niche store, I mean 
a store that sells products just for dogs versus a store that sells products for dogs, cats, fish, sports people, camping stuff, homeware, that sort of thing. People want to buy from an expert in their subject, in their field, because they assume that they get a better, higher quality product. So here's a great example if you're watching this from the UK. If you want to take your family out for, if you want to get your family a really nice Indian meal, are you going to go to an Indian restaurant that only serves Indian food? Or are you going to go to one of these takeaways that serves Indian food, Italian food, English food, and Chinese food all in one? You're probably going to go to the Indian restaurant because that's what they specialize in. Same thing applies to e-commerce. People like to go to a brand because it gives off the impression that they care more and they're they're experts in their field and therefore they're much more likely to supply a quality product. So that's why you should stay away from general stores. Unless of course you are going and trying to capture the entire market and those kind of like bargain basement type stores. But when you're working on tight margins and dropshipping these tight margins, then I don't think that's a good route to go. Next we have social proof. Social proof is everything. Um, if you follow the channel, I pretty much mention this in every video because it's so, so, so important. Think about it, you're scrolling through your newsfeed, your spine, looking up on what your friends are doing, and then this ad pops up for this product that interrupts your day, but it looks pretty cool and you want to find out more information about it. You go onto their Facebook page, they've got zero likes, zero followers. Their last post was so-and-so company updated their profile picture, the page was created two months ago. You go onto their website, there's no reviews, or if there are reviews, if they look fake because they're broken English, they're gibberish, they don't really make sense. You're not going to trust that business. You're certainly not going to risk giving across your credit or debit card details. So social proof is everything. Every single page on your website should have reviews, reviews of your business, reviews of the products, and they should make sense and they should look realistic as well. If you do not, if your customers do not trust you, they will not buy from you and that is a fact. Next we have put your logo everywhere including on the product. So check out a company called Nanocast. They sell this portable, um, it's like a barrel shaped projector that you can charge up and take with you wherever you want. You can shine Netflix on your ceiling, you can shine it on your wall, you can shine on your bed sheets. Um, and on their website they have the logo clearly on the actual product itself in the product imagery. Scroll down into the reviews, there's no logo on any products. But by having that logo shown on the product, it makes them look so much more professional and so much more established. And remember, when we're drop shipping, we're using drop shipping as a business model for a proof of concept, a way to reduce risk before we invest into private labeling a product. So Amazon FBA, you can't drop ship on there for a couple of hundred quid to see if a product works before investing in hundreds if not thousands of pieces of stock which costs you thousands of pounds whereas with drop shipping we can we can drop ship a product for a few weeks see if it works and spend just a few hundred pounds maybe a grand or so and if it does work then look to private label and invest into the product before so it's a way of kind of testing it works reduce the risk um, before we go ahead and do that in terms of the design Keep it simple, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Don't go for a black background in red text, unless it's a Halloween store or something like that. Just keep design simple. Check out some competitors, people selling the same products. Um, check out some stores on Dropper Spy or on Store Hunter and check out the kind of strategy they're using, what color their backgrounds are, uh, what fonts they're using, that sort of thing. Keep the design simple and keep it the information in your store easy to consume. People can, picture really does say a thousand words. You can have a picture, a GIF of a product doing something and it explains what the product does. Whereas if you had to write the equivalent in text, it might take you a couple of paragraphs. So where possible, try and use icons, imagery and GIFs over text. This is a really important one. I'm gonna put this in bold actually and underline it because this is something that just people just do not consider at all. Like when you, it's something that consumers do subconsciously as well, and probably something you do subconsciously too. So think about the last time you bought something online. There's certain things about that type of product or that item that you want to know before you're willing to commit to it. Otherwise, you wouldn't buy it. So for example, if you're selling, if we use Nanocast as an example, um, 
half of the comments, maybe even more than half the comments on Facebook were people asking things about the products because they probably couldn't find the answer in the video or find the answer on the website. And people who aren't sure about something don't spend money. So you need to make sure that you kind of put yourself into your consumer's mind, think about the sorts of questions they would want answering or sort of information about products they'd want to know and make sure you answer every single one. Because again, confused consumers don't buy anything. So if you're selling a battery powered product, how long does it take to charge? How big is the battery? Um, how long does the battery last? And then you have the things that aren't actually about the products and they're more about the business. So how much is shipping? Is it free? If it isn't, then how do I get free shipping? Is there a discount code I can use? Um, when will the product arrive? What is the returns information? What's the shipping information? You need to make all of these things crystal clear on your website and easily accessible. Don't try and hide anything because somebody who goes looking for a piece of information is actually a good thing because they wouldn't be looking for that piece of information unless they were serious about potentially making a purchase. And if they can't find that information, they're gonna leave because there's that confusion and unsurety about shopping with you. Last but certainly not least is feature people everywhere. Use a tool called placeit.net. There's mock models on there with different t-shirts and different scenes and settings. Um, get people on your website, use influencers, use yourself, use friends and family. People wanna buy from businesses where they know there's a real person behind it. Scam stores do not have people behind it because when you start showing faces and real people and having contact information and that sort of thing, all of a sudden the business becomes a lot more trackable. And if you are a legitimate business, then of course you're trackable because you're not scamming people and therefore you don't care if you're trackable and you don't care if people know who you are. So try and feature people as much as possible across your website. Moving on to supply then. So stay away from AliExpress if possible. They're not a specific drop shipping supplier. You can use them. I have seen, I used to use them to be fair. Um, I've seen people use them in the past, but your life will be a lot easier. Your business will be so much less stress stressable. Um, your business will be a lot less stressful if you use a proper agent like CJ Dropshipping or BS Dropshipping or Sendrop, whoever it may be. Look around, put a simple Google search in, you'll be inundated with the different amount of dropshipping suppliers and agents out there. Yes, it might take you a week or two to talk to all of them and get the quotations or get the numbers and shipping times and all of that down. Just record it all. And again, if you're in this for the right reasons and you're serious about making this, then spending a week or two to speak to 20 or 30 different agents and suppliers is not a big deal. Point number three, ideally look for an agent. However, there's a bit more work. Um, a lot of trust comes into this, obviously. Um, so this can wait until you're established. But if you know of one, or if you can even better get a recommendation, then it's always a good route to go down. Last but not least, longer than two weeks delivery is a no-go. Anything under that is definitely manageable, at least for the dropshipping stages. Again, going back to that proof of concept idea, anything less than two weeks is more than manageable um, and more than works as well for you to validate that the business idea works before then moving and progressing onto private labeling, so on and so forth. So just make sure whoever you're speaking to, they can guarantee a delivery of 90% of parcels plus um, under that two week mark. Let's move on to marketing then. The beast that is marketing, it's a bit of a jungle, very overwhelming for people just starting out. When you create a business manager and you've got all the different tabs and data sets and pixels um, and security center and ads manager and people, pages, Instagram, it can be domain verification and all these weird complex terms. It can be a bit of a stressful place or overwhelming place to be. So here's some kind of like generic guidelines to kind of keep you on track and make sure you're focusing your time and attention in the right places. Ultimately though, the key to kind of take away from anything is that in the beginning, you are gonna be a newbie. You are gonna be overwhelmed. If this is something you wanna do, you're just gonna to have to keep investing more and more time into learning your craft, into learning what you're doing um, in order to get over it. And number one to start, go cheap when starting out to test the waters. So think of like, if you are starting a new hobby, if you are taking up golf, would you go out there and buy brand new Callaway drivers and woods, brand new tireless irons, brand new wedges, a Scotty Cameron putter and a brand new tireless bag and spend three or four grand, you probably wouldn't, right? You'd probably go for a cheap starter set for three or 400 quid, see if you actually enjoy the game, see if you can get better at the game. And then when you do, slowly kind of expanding your bag and buying more expensive clubs. 
Facebook is exactly the same thing. Don't go and spend more than 50 quid or 100 quid on an ad creative. Don't go and spend more than 10 pounds a day per ad set. Start out super cheap, see what happens, dip your toes in, see if you can get the odd purchase. Um, look at the numbers, try and get your head around what CTR and CPC and all that sort of thing means. Try and get your head around how you influence those numbers and what those numbers actually reflect and mean. I'll give you kind of like the most important things um, today, but ultimately, like you could write a book, you could write a film, you could write a course solely just on um, social media marketing. Once you do get some good results then, so you've had a couple of purchases, um, the data looks pretty good. These are some very rough ballpark numbers, by the way. So 2% CTR, that is a link CTR, less than $1 click, so CPC, um, and you've had the odd purchase, of course, then reinvest in your business. So instead of going 0 to 100, go 0 to 10, see if things start working out, see if there's potential, and when there is that potential, invest more, double down on what's working. As for platforms, I like Facebook for consistency. There are still the odd issues with ads getting rejected for no reason, banned ad accounts, that sort of thing. But I keep telling people, like, if you haven't done anything seriously wrong, more often than not, it's gonna be a Facebook mistake and you'll get everything back within 24 hours. So sometimes you do have to be a bit patient with them, but when it comes to a consistent results and relying on kind of what's gonna come the next day, then I really like Facebook for that. When it comes to the strongest type of buyers, so this can call, almost like link back to the product that you select. For me, females 40 plus are the strongest buyers. Like I've tried selling products to males before. I, I used to sell quite a lot of cycling gear actually, and that worked to be fair, but the strength of the consumer when it comes to females over the age of 40, they're just the strongest buyers. It's just a fact. So when you're doing your product research, maybe keep that in the back of your mind. Just think, would a female over the age of 40 want to buy this product? Next, test five to 10 variations of creatives. When I've started a new ad account, especially, I find this incredibly important. The difference between using like small minute changes can make a big impact. It can be an emoji in a different place. It can be a certain wording. The first two lines, so there's a famous saying in marketing where 80 cents of your dollar is spent on the first two lines, so your primary text and the top of that Facebook ad. Try and get as many keywords and buzzwords in there. So for example, if you're selling a toy for large dogs like German Shepherds because they're strong biters, they are the keywords I just mentioned there you want in those first two lines. So it could be a testimonial from somebody who says, my German Shepherd is a strong chewer. Every toy I've ever tried in the past is no good after two weeks, except for this one or something along those lines, right? Just get the keywords, get the buzzwords, the words that are gonna resonate with your audience. Get them in the first two lines of the primary text and get them in the first few seconds of your video ad creative as well. Get five or 10 variations of different creatives going or assign an equal budget, I should say, assign an equal budget to each of the creatives. So each budget, each creative has its fair chance of success. It's an equal test. You can see what works and then again, double down on the best performing creative. The last tip I'm gonna leave you with is include people speaking. It is 100% a fact. If you have one video that just has a voiceover and one video that has somebody on screen talking, the person on screen where you can see their emotions, you can see their mouth moving, you can see them moving on camera talking about the product, 100% it holds people's attention a lot more than just having a voiceover. You can combine the two, so there's a change of frame every kind of two or three seconds to again kind of reset somebody's attention span. But if you're gonna go for one or the other, make sure you try and get somebody on camera talking and speaking about the product and better yet get subtitles of what they are saying and get the subtitles to appear one word at a time in timing with what the person is saying because every time that subtitle comes on the screen it resets somebody's attention and focus it gets them to look at what's changing and it keeps them invested and without even thinking about it just watching more of your creative and of course the more of your creative they watch the more features and benefits of the products they will see and therefore, the more likely you are to be interested, click your link and go and buy the product. And so with that being said, guys, that is my four-step process, my naught to 10K beginner strategy. I covered a lot in this video. It's kind of like a mini course. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you would like some help, some hand-holding, walking through this, you might have heard me mention a couple of times in the video that I work one-to-one -one with people. Um, check out the links in the video description below. There's a link you can use to book in a call with me so we can have a chat. Um, I can get to know you, see where you're at with your business, see where you wanna be in two or three months time, um, and see if I can be the person to help you get there. If that sounds good to you, make sure you check out those links. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.